A baby in the hand is worth two in the bathwater. It's not rocket surgery. And God closes a can of worms, he opens another. Malifors are blended idioms. That is to say that what you do is you get two idioms, you blend them together so that they make no sense and that they resemble the idiot cousin of a metaphor that looks like a brain fart and probably eats its own poo. A friend of mine recently highlighted these produce of the verbally poor, saying that her favourite was, let's burn that bridge when we get to it. It's the sort of thing that a character would say in a telly show or on the films and that. They would probably be like, I don't know, someone's idiot boss who's really pretentious and everyone likes to laugh at behind his back, but he's got loads of power and he kind of bullies them a little bit, but he says idiotic things and then the main character pulls. You understand what I'm saying. On a side note, malifors are probably the same, in fact, they are the same thing as egg corns, which is, I did a video on that once. I'm not going to link it. I can't be bothered. The etymology of malifor is quite clear. It comes from a blending of two words, which is um, malapropism or malapropism, 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 meaning something inappropriate, and metaphor, which means metaphor. It was first coined by Lawrence Harrison in 1976 in the Washington Post. It's also interesting to note that Malifor, of course, is a portmanteau, which I, again, I did a video, which is nice. Now, some of you might be murmuring at the back about the fact that the first bit of Malifor, the mal bit, is uh, of a Latin root. And the second part of Malifor, the for bit, is of a Greek root. So mal, meaning bad, goes back to proto-italic, which when I looked that up and I saw the word italic, I realised that I should probably do a video on italics and why we call some letters italics when they're all slanty-like. And the for bit comes from the Greek fora, meaning to carry. Now, this is a fair point, and to be honest, I don't really care, but there was a point in my life when I did care about words having two different etymologies and then being blended together by people who wanted to ignore that. There was a point when I cared about that. I don't care anymore, but I will try to explain why I think this is okay. You see, the Greek part of the word, the four bit, has been around in Latinate uh, French for so long, since Middle French, in fact, that actually you could say that it's a Latin word with a Greek origin. So at some point, in the past that might have been considered a loan word but now actually it's more accurate to consider it of French origin. It's a bit like a bit of furniture in a house that's just sort of been around for so long, a bit like I suppose maybe a book that you've had so long that you've been borrowing off a friend and then you've had it so long that it's just sort of become yours, Martin. Nah, you're all right. I mean, I've got basically 10 of your DVDs and probably three of your books and they've, I mean, I, I will read and watch them at some point, probably. So you've probably seen someone in the real world or on a telly show saying a malifor and then not really knowing that they're saying it and then seeing the other character react to that or whatever. But actually, I think that the fun of this particular word is saying them on purpose to other people. Seeing the little cogs go around inside, working out whether they should be rude to you or not. Now, I should say at this point, but it's generally accepted to mock people who are either an equal to you, someone that you know, hopefully, or someone who is superior to you, maybe your boss who's a bit of a bellend. Mocking the weak tends to make you look like a bit of a tosser. So I'm just going to hand you two more. Obviously, there were three right at the top of this video. Here's two more, which, <laughs> funnily enough, are on the Wiktionary entry of Malifors, which makes me laugh a lot because these two are entirely inappropriate for all and sundry. It's like stabbing a hole in the dark and similarly, stop pissing on my thunder, which actually both sound like things that you should probably be doing in the privacy of your own home, I suspect, probably with somebody else who is consenting. If you're watching this on YouTube, then go over to Instagram. Sometimes I might do something interesting. And if you're watching this on Instagram, then go over to YouTube and do a subscribe and a like to Puzzle Writer. Sometimes I might make a video that might make you laugh or something. And Lord knows I need the subscribers. Well, I don't really need them, but it would be nice for my ego and my sense of self-worth if I knew that more than just my mum was watching that. 
Take care of yourselves.